One of the best parts of being a content marketing veteran, I'm in my 50s, and I've been involved in content marketing in one way or the other for the last 20 years, is seeing patterns show up and how technology impacts our content and our marketing. Even in marketing, it seems there is nothing new under the sun. The ebb and flow of too much info has been one we've struggled with as humans since the internet became an integral part of our lives. 20 years ago, I was writing keyword stuff 400 blogs for companies, for 10 cents a word by the way, that had no consideration for the reader and were all about getting Google to notice us. Let me tell you that they were the best way for me to learn how to read, write fast to get $100 an hour. Boy, could I blitz through those ones once I got a formula. My name is Rachel Clava and I am the host of Mapit Marketing and the host of a new podcast which has just come out. It's only, in fact, it's coming out today. Today is the day. So have a look for it. It's called Confident Content and it's all about content marketing for small business owners. And this is kind of like an overlap from that one. Um, we've got just a few more episodes left of Mapit Marketing. So come and listen to this, listen to the next three. And then if you're new to the show, go and double down and listen to all the old ones because there will be 123 episodes to listen to in total. We've got a few to listen to. All right. Anyway, going back to this, the, the reason that we want to think about um, getting into content marketing now and how more it's better for us is that our need for hum a human need for good content has actually increased and it will increase the more we use AI. Our bodies can tell that it's not necessarily a that it's AI content. We will get better at understanding it. The brain will not resonate with the content as well. And so content that's written by a real person that's often flawed but has distinctively human feel is going to be the stuff that we want to connect with. AI is currently creating a flood. People who've been paralyzed into content creation content creation before and even content creation creators who just want to pour out as much as possible now have technology to help them do just that. There's AI everywhere. And, you know, I am one of those people. I'm definitely using it. But I'm also excited about the opportunities other business owners are creating for me because the more that they create AI generic work, the more my individual thinks of what I call my ideas will stand out and be noticed and rise to the top. They have a different cadence. They feel very human and my people will find them. So we're going to go through why content marketing is even more of an opportunity for your small business than ever before why you need to be creating confident content like my podcast and what I'm doing to help you do just that. So strap in, have a listen, and I am so pleased that I get to do this with you this week. Welcome, this is Mabbit Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. Hello and welcome to Identify Marketing. I'm your host, Rachel Claver, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this podcast with you. It's also a really special day for me because I am launching a new podcast, which is out today, called Confident Content. You can find it on all good podcast platforms, but also you can go and have a look at it. Listen to the first three episodes in the trailer on confidentcontentpodcast.com to have a listen to it. And we're talking about content marketing today because I am doubling down on content marketing. One of the things that I found hard, and, and most of my clients find it exactly the same thing, is working out how to narrow your niche. And for a long time, I played around with this. Um, there was opportunities. I could have become a social media coach. There are so many out there that do a great job. I'm 52. And to be honest, I find the constant changes around social media really exhausting. I still have to keep up with the play. I do. I do a lot of professional development around that space. But I didn't want to have to feel like I had to be first out with everything when it came to social media stuff because it changes all the time. And to be honest, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with, with social media a lot of the time. I didn't want to have to feel like I was reading everything from Meta, from Missouri, from um, Missouri, um, the guy that that is in charge of, of Instagram, um, keeping up with play with everything and just keeping up and, and learning all that stuff all the time just felt like it wasn't something that I was really passionate about. And there are people out there that does that. Then I could have gone down the, you know, the analytics route, but we all know how I feel about that. Um, I could do so many different options. And then when I looked at it and I thought about what I have done in my background, there's always, my love has always been content. 
I didn't want to go platform specific because I really believe that everyone needs to find the platform that fits them. And I've never been, I guess, monogamous with a particular platform. There are ones that I love and then there's other ones that I really enjoy playing around with. And gosh, this sounds like the polyamorous approach to marketing. Is that what I'm talking about? But anyway, um, content marketing for me is is a really important um, part of just actually building authority, building a regular voice, building trust, building community, building everything that makes it easier for you to grow your business, but doing it with value and purpose and love. And that's why I'm doubling down on it. And a lot of people have talked about ChatGPT and the impact on content marketing, but I already believe that this is the age where and content marketing can really shine. And ChatGPT has given us such a powerful weapon for us to be able to go, huh, we're not going to be a chat GPT business. We might use it a bit, we might use it as a tool, I'm not against that, but actually we're going to use our time to dig deep and really become known for our voice, a voice that people cannot replicate because it is distinctly ours. We all use language, we're going to develop ways of talking, we're going to find ways to communicate with our audience that stands out because so many of our competitors will be using chat GPT. And you think that marketers are not going to be doing this? Let me tell you, so many marketers are using ChatGPT and I'm loving it because they sound the same. And this is happening across all industries. The best thing for us right now is to double down into content marketing. So I thought I'd give you a whole reason why you should do the same thing. Um, Obviously, I'm invested in content marketing and definitely do go and check my podcast that's due out today. Um, It will be got a couple more episodes left with Mapit Marketing before I take a little break from Mapit Marketing to really put some time into uh, confident content. When I have kind of got that running and going, I'm going to be using Mapit Marketing probably just with a few one-off episodes every now and again and then moving towards doing some episodes and series where I look at a particular thing, for example, ADHD entrepreneurs or something around um, areas that the content marketing won't cover. So it might be strategic alliances or something like that and going deep in those things. But for a while, it's just going to be confident content. So these are the last few episodes before that happens. All right. So one of the reasons that we want to do it is that using our content is going to help us build authority with our audiences. And people want to have genuine connection. You can't get genuine connection with a chat GPT created content. It sounds good on the surface, but I kind of think it's like a Krispy Kreme. You know, they look good. They look real good. But when you bite into it, it's got no substance. And that's what so much content is like with chat GPT. Original content allows us to really show our thoughts, our processes, and our own little quirks of weirdness. It's the stuff that's not perfect. Our imperfections are going to make it shine. I believe there will be a day where the typo is going to let us know that the stuff was written by a person and not by ChatGPT. And all those things of telling stories, of sharing our values, helps us create a deeper bond with our audience. And that's powerful stuff. And you can't do that as well with ChatGPT created content. So we're going to double down and get into digital content because we really want to build that authority to connect with our audience better. We also want to stand out from the noise. It's got so much generic recycled content. And by using original content, we get to break through that noise and stand out. I kind of think the way I explain it is I always close my eyes at this point and I think of this really crowded train station with all these people trying to hawk their wares in there. And there's all these people rushing around going, I've got to go to work, I've got to go pick my kids up, I've got to do all this stuff. And they're all running around, busy and frenetic. And Suddenly there's this person and everyone else is wearing black and suddenly there's this person wearing this bright pink outfit dancing around doing something different and everyone's going to stop and pause and they might, some of them might watch, some of them might just stop, pause and then move on going that's not my sort of person but it's going to be noticed and it's going to stand out. That is what we're trying to do. The more we create our own content, the easier it is for us to break through the noise of everything else that's recycled. The easy way, easiest way it is for us to grab attention and stand out from our competitors who might be using AI-generated content most of the time or templated materials. Now, I teach a structure, a content caption writing structure. It's a, it's a pretty good one, um, and I have it in my book. But when I'm working with my content masterware people, we go deeper than that. We take that structure, we play with it, and we, we maneuver it because the beginners were going to use the structure, and the structure's good. 
But to really stand out, we need to go deeper. And I think that's really key with this is actually finding ways to really connect with our audience with our content is so important. Um, now we talked um, next week, we're talking to Verity Craft about thought leadership. And I have feelings about the word thought leadership or the phrase thought leadership. I don't think anyone should come out and go, I want to be a thought leader. Um, I have issues with that. Um, and interestingly enough, Verity also agrees around that kind of thing of like, if we're just trying to be a thought leader, we're kind of missing the point. But I do think that having your own content and creating things from your own thoughts and allowing yourself to see models and understand things in your industry and then taking your own viewpoint and your slant of it that a chat GPT or AI model isn't doing. They're just kind of giving you the information. And even if they are giving you a slant, it's a slant that's got a bias of them. It's not your slant. Um, that it does allow us to establish thought leadership or establish ourselves as someone who's different to everyone else and is rising above. And a good sign of that is that your industry is starting to talk to you or look to you for advice or support. That's a really good way of, of kind of showing that it is. But when we're constantly showing our own valuable insights, when we're showing our tips and ideas and sharing our expertise, it helps build that trust and credibility in who we are. One of my favorite testimonials from one of my courses is it's a guy who's a marketer and he's really amazing. I think he's really awesome with what he does. But he said, Rachel doesn't share the same on content everyone else does. She's got her own content. To me, that is the key. If people are starting to recognize that our stuff is different, they're going to come and watch it again. They're going to build trust and come back to it again because it's going to stand out. Using your own language in that can really help do that. But also just thinking, here's a model. How can I make that in my own words? Um, as I've been recording this today, um, this is this is back of the past. Uh, for Lizzie Davidson, who I've mentioned before, she's been on my podcast before, she today used an analogy of using a house with different rooms to write your website copy. And to me, that's magic. She has taken website copy, which lots of people talk about, and then created a framework around it to describe it. And it helps people stand her work apart from other people. And that's the cleverness of of using that. Now, of course, ChatGPT could come up with that idea, but you still have to articulate it. And I think that's the key thing is that you might be able to use it to generate some ideas around how to frame it. You could say, hey, I want to I want to talk about thought leadership, but use a dog as an example. Um, you know, like dogs sleeping and dogs chasing and dogs playing with a board. How would I do that? You know, you could potentially use ChatGPT to come up with a framework but you're still the one that's got to believe in it, teach it, and make those tied in bits really work and stand out. The other thing that I think is really key is that we really want to make sure that we've got um, encouraging that community engagement. If it's stuff standing out, people are more likely to comment on it. And personal story, I think, is one of the things that I've really learned has been like that. I've had a couple of posts go viralish, viral for me. Um, on LinkedIn and TikTok and a few other places where I've shared personal story and I've shared things about my life and, and how it connects with marketing, how it connects with business. I've shared stories from my clients, um, obviously with their permission or without um, identifying who they are, removing identifying features. But the more personal story you tell, the more real life story from your life, the more powerful it is for you to create content that people are going to engage with. And when we go into content marketing, a third of our content should be part of this personal story. Again, it's not something that ChatGPT can create for you because it's coming from your own life. It's coming from your own experiences. And the deeper we use that content, it helps other people share their own thoughts, ask questions and engage with us, which is really powerful. It helps build a vibrant community. This is the stuff I really love doing in my emails this year and also doing a lot more in my posts is really just exploring where I want to share, what I want to share, and being brave enough to do that without feeling like I'm robbing myself of all privacy as well, which I think is really key when it comes down to this. The other thing that I think is that I really want people to feel like they just feel comfortable sharing with me, that they feel relaxed enough to talk and, and build that relationship. It's not about me selling to every one of those people that talk, talk to me. I'm very lazy when it comes to following those people into leads. I really want them to be able to do that themselves and wait till they're ready. But it's about allowing people to have feel like that I'm listening to them, I'm modeling coaching behavior while I talk back to them. I'm disagreeing with them sometimes or allowing them to disagree and then me come back and disagree with their disagreement and without being nasty about it, but also go, actually, hey, that was a good point there. You know, you've really helped me change my idea and thinking around things as well. 
and all of that forges connections and makes people feel more connected with us and supported. I think the other thing is that with um, d- digging deep on content marketing too is that if we have a plan that we're using where we're watching our community and doing it, the other thing that really helps is it helps us to be more adaptable and flexible, uh, which is really key. So it means that we can really have an opportunity to manage our content in a way where we adapt looking at the content that people have done before and then providing content. Um, I love that on TikTok, I've, I, mean, I mentioned this in the previous episode, that you know, if someone asks a question or talks about something, I can grab that and then reply back and I'll have their question on the screen and they can talk to it directly. I love that I can do that where if someone's having a conversation with me in a coaching group, I can take notes from that and then I might use that content as being nimble and being practical around actually using the the content that's coming out of your interactions with clients, with prospects and with your community and turning that into content is something that you can only do because you're experiencing it. I also believe that one of the biggest, most powerful things of us doubling down on content this year and really getting into it without focusing or worrying about AI is that real ability to humanize our brand. We have a more and more more higher craving every year as, as social media evolves, as, as communities break down, like real life communities, if as those relationships where we're connecting with neighbors and people on the street and in communities, as those things um, break down, as we become more isolated, we have become more in need of connection online or in need of connection with our brands. We want to feel that we're connected with people. We want to feel that humanized brand. It needs to feel like it's got a human touch to it. And if it doesn't have that, it's going to really miss the thing that people are connecting with. Some things like humor, um, having personality in there, having occasional swears. I have those in my threads. I don't have swears a lot in my other stuff. It's partly because historically I worked with a lot of quite conservative business owners and so I didn't have them. Um, And I don't necessarily think I have to have swears. If you guys have heard me swear on here, you know, if you've listened to some of my podcasts, I definitely swear and I've let my clients swear as well. And let my my guests swear, you know, if they swear, that's cool. Um, But I think that, you know, having those little things just make it more personally driven. Um, I've shared stories on here about my personal life and my background which makes people connect to me in other ways. You know, I had someone today say, I had asked me for some advice in a book some time, and she said, I've booked with you partly because, um, you know, I've left an abusive marriage, and I know that you have had one, and that you have been a single mum, and I'm a single mum, and I just need to have someone who's walked that journey as well as my business journey, and it's been really important to me. I, she wouldn't have come to me if I hadn't shared those things. She, You know, and I love that my experience and being further down the track from her with that has helped her resonate with me and I can add value to her because of that. You know, I don't think that, you know, whatever we're doing, if, if we hold back on some of those things, and I'm not saying we have to like spread everything out all the time and, you know, I'm healed from that stuff so it has no impact on me. But I love that that content, that help of sharing that stuff has helped connect her with me a bit better. It also is beneficial just from SEO and organic reach to talk like a human being. Google likes stuff that sounds like it's written by a person. Um, It sounds like it's more original and quality content. And yes, you can get good rankings using some of the formats with ChatGPT, but you can get better rankings if you're using original content that still has those keywords in it. Um, People want it. If it's more valuable and it makes it feel like it's something that's in depth and unusual and original, rather than having something that you could get from anyone else, it's going to stand out. And I will tell you that even though I've played a lot with ChatGPT, getting it to say stuff that's like really good and clever is pretty tricky. And you've got to work a long time with it. And sometimes the amount of time that you work with it, you could have written it yourself. So, you know, it really is key to make sure that you think about how you can actually use it to even just improve the visitors or the um, from SEO to your website. It's also just for me, and I think this is really important, is long term, the result, the long term result. Um, return on your investment when it comes to really good original content marketing is so high. Um, I've talked about this before. It does take a while to get this feeling, but you know I've been really digging deeper to content marketing for a long time. I'm not great at SEO. I'm not great at analytics. Um, I'm I've got ADHD and I, don't, I have far from perfect on so many things. But I've kept my content focused and consistent and talking to my community now for a good many years. And it means that no matter what is happening in the outside world, 
no matter whether there's a recession or not, our business still gets leads, our business still gets growth, and it's what I teach my clients, and they get still get leads and still get growth too. In fact, I just heard from a client today, their business was about to have to close down forever if we couldn't turn things around in eight weeks. Our marketing strategy, working with them, getting it done, solved it. And they're now in a good to go place. They're all full up, they're safe, they're in the red, they're in the black, no longer in the red. And that comes from the fact that they have used the content marketing to really build on and act on it. Now, you can't always turn everything around in eight weeks. And they did come before everything was super, super dire. But it really does go to show that that return of investment about creating that original content, we just tweaked a few things that they were doing and made it more original, more setting out and talking to their ideal audience. And for local businesses, there'll always be a quicker turnaround than the nationwide base one. But as that content begins to pe- gain traction, it will keep on generating leads, it will keep on attracting your right ideal clients, and it will give you that business name of being someone who's a trusted authority, which will last a long time, even when you're not actively promoting it, although keep going, you don't want to, you know, you want to be consistent. Um, so I think that's really key. And I think the last thing is, is that with me, for me, is that with content marketing, that the real power is that you get to innovate, you get to show your creativity, you get to stand out. And you can't do that with AI. I think the power is to be brave. Like I feel I've lost some of my creativity. Some of you guys know me from my go to the tree times. My, you know, I wrote a book called Be a Spider, Build a Web. And I think it's been a really interesting evolution for me as I've been sitting and doing other things. And I've, my focus has been on teaching how to to my clients around some things. And I've changed models and those things. That there's been less time for me to kind of create those word pictures and one of the things I'm looking forward to next year is actually taking more time out to actually continue to innovate and be creative. If we're innovating and creative with our words, we're always going to be better. I once asked ChatGPT, you know, explain to me how a golden tree could be, I didn't use it specifically, that I explained what a golden tree was, um, but how, how that would be related to social media. And ChatGPT said, I don't know. I don't know. Which just says everything we can know about AI. I am doubling down on content marketing because I know it is the one best way to ensure my business keeps on getting amazing, amazing clients. Like some of you, I've got to work with some of you from this podcast and I've got to work with you, some of you through my writing and my posts and things like that. And my clients get to work with amazing clients when they really tap into this too. So I've got a question for you. Are you going to double down on this? Are you going to trust the process? Are you going to get through it? And are you going to be more confident with your content? And are you going to come and listen to my new podcast, Confident Content? Because it's out today. And there's three episodes there waiting for you. So if you've just listened to this one, go and have a listen to that. And I hope this has helped you today too. And have a great week. I'm here for another few weeks. Next week we've got Verity and she is amazing. I loved it. She's a client, but she's an incredible marketer and client, but she's a client and she's an incredible marketer around helping people with thought leadership, helping people like write books and build their brand around their own thoughts and ideas. And this is a great segue into that. So I hope you tune in next week. I'm at marketing for that. Have a great week. Hey, I would love to ask you a huge favor. Go and have a listen to my brand new podcast, Confident Content. And if you love it, so give it a review. I would love it if you could help me just get that word out and even share it perhaps with other people if you found it helpful. If you've got questions about today, come along to our group, Map It Marketing, on Facebook. And remember, you can always come and register for one of my free content strategy workshops. I've got a few more left around New Zealand, and I'll be doing a lot more of them in New Zealand and online next year. They are 100% free. So register, be on my list. You're the first one to know when they're coming out. And I would love to see you at one of these. Remember, I can be a bit awkward face-to-face when I'm talking to people. I am much better talking to a microphone or to an audience. But I promise you, I will be nice to you. I'll just I'll just sound like a bit of a dick, really. Right, um, next week, it is a very exciting week because I have our very last one a podcast with a guest. It is Verity Craft, and she's talking to us all about thought leadership. And honestly, I love this podcast. I know it so much. And she did a little bit of shifting in my head too. So maybe she'll do the same for you. Have a great week. 
If you love what you heard today, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you love this episode in particular, I'd love it if you shared it on social media. Remember to tag me in so I can say thank you. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.